Hi everyone and welcome to this full length tutorial on painting a baby's eyes in soft pastel. I used pastel matte paper for this project and a combination of Unison Soft Pastels, Faber-Castell Pit Pencils and also some Pan Pastels and Blenders. I hope you enjoy this tutorial of uh, real time footage and I also share the Unison colour codes with you as we go. If you like this then please do subscribe here on YouTube and also check out my Patreon channel where you'll find lots more full length tutorials like this and more. So I've shared a little screen to the left just to give you a bit of a close up of what I'm doing. And I start off with a nice warm coloured brown pastel pencil. I don't want to come in with dark colours too early, so I'm always trying to make use of nice warm colours in around the rims of the eyes. And at this time I'm still just trying to confirm the outline of the eye before committing to anything darker, so I'm just neatening up the soft pastel that I've applied around the edges already and following my photo reference as a guide on the exact shape I'm going for. You can see in my video the shape is a little bit off as my footage is a little skewed in perspective but hopefully just watching me build this up will still be very useful to you. So I come in with the dark black fabric castell pencil and start to firm up the outline of the iris. My line sketch is usually pretty accurate to get me going and the reason I leave eyes until quite late on in the, in the piece, uh, I want to be sure of the structure of the face that I've got all the proportions right as all the skin tones around the eyes can easily be moved and manipulated slightly but once I've used the really dark colours in the eyes I want to be a hundred percent sure that I've got them in the right place and don't need to move them once I've got them done. So I like to build up a lot of the structure around the eyes before actually working on the eyes themselves. And those areas around the eyelids are places that I come back to many times throughout the portrait. I keep coming back to these and I usually leave eyelashes until quite near the end. Eyes are just so important in a portrait and I keep looking at them with a fresh set of eyes myself and maybe the next day I have a few more tweaks that I do to the eyelids just to really capture the likeness, the expression on the person's face. So for the first few moments here, you'll see me mostly work around the edges of the eyes, uh, the skin surrounding the eyes, the eyelids. Just trying to get those little bulges and the way the light is hitting certain contours of the skin. And that will really later help me get a good uh, likeness in the eyes themselves as all of those other factors really affect the expression. And using a little bit of white pastel pencil, just starting to pick out some of the highlights that you often find in the corner of the eyes where there's some moisture to be reflected And so I'm not leaning very heavily. You don't tend to have to lean very heavily on pastel matte paper. It goes on nice and smoothly. And I even find that the lighter coloured pastel pencils go on quite nicely on top of the darker colours. If you're interested in seeing how I built up the skin tones in this piece, 
check out my Patreon channel where I have a full length series now, uh, two hours worth of real time footage showing you from beginning to end how to choose your colours, um, blending techniques. And I learned a lot myself working on this piece as it was my first time using pastel mat for people portrait. And I also made use of pan pastels in this piece for the first time. But a lot of the time the techniques on the whole are very similar and what I normally do on velour paper translates quite easily onto any of the other papers. But I'm just constantly talking about colour theory, mark making, layering up the pastel, uh, different blending techniques, all things that you need on any of the pastel papers. But I am also hoping to experiment on a lot more different pastel papers this year so that I can share those experiences and also be able to compare them all quite easily for you. So now back working on the eyelids and I'm finally bringing in a little bit of black pastel pencil and I'm really going lightly at this. The last thing I want is to create a big thick dark line but there is a significant amount of darkness in there and between brown and black I do try and get it as dark as possible. But you'll see later on that I come back in with other warm colours around it just to soften how dark and cold that black is. So it's just about being careful where you add the contrast if you go too dark on, especially on a children's portrait, you can easily make them look too old. So the main thing is to try and keep everything soft. But I do want it to be nicely contrasted in there, so I do come in with some black pastel pencil and then try and soften it a little. And now picking up some of my unison and my biggest tip for painting any eyes is to beware of what colour you make the whites of the eyes. So I'm picking up a blue here. As you can see when you look at the photo reference, the reflection in the eye itself you could possibly use a bright white there. But on the actual eyeball then if you compare that bright white reflection with the white of the eyeball, it's much darker and because it's sitting back into the eye socket a little bit in shade. So I always start out with a light blue and that's on the eye that's in the sunlight. Then if I look to the other eye, I'm going to want to use an even darker blue in that part of the eye. So you really need to uh, forget what colour you think it should be and try and see what colours are actually there. So when you look at a white object, try and forget that it's a white object and just look for the colours that you can see as you'll see shadows and reflected colours and much more than just white. So that's the first thing that I add in the whites of the eyes and just constantly neatening up the outline of the eye. But I kind of see the the whites of the eye as being the background and then I can add the iris on top of that. And the first thing I do especially if it's lovely deep blue eyes like this. I'm just giving myself a bit of an outline again. Really paying attention to the curve of the circle. 
noticing where it comes in view on the top lid and where it disappears from view onto the bottom lid. Each little measurement uh, makes all the difference in portraiture. And I'm just marking in where my reflection will go, where the pupil will go. And now picking up a nice shard of my blue unison. And I'm not too worried at this stage if it's not the neatest job filling in. There's so much tweaking left to do and it really doesn't matter if I go over my lines a little bit. But I like to use the bigger pastel sticks when I need the most strength of colour. So I'll always look for an edge that I can make small marks with. And then I can come back in with the pastel pencils and neaten all of that up. But for now I'm just trying to block in most of the iris. And I've left a little bit of a gap for the reflection just so that it uh, shines really brightly. But constantly coming back in, reshaping the eye, each time hopefully getting it a little closer. I'm being really particular with the outline of the iris as that's so important. Just having one of those curves a bit off will completely change the expression in the eye. And that little area in the corner of the eye just coming in with a nice fleshy warm brown and then a light grey just to reshape that area. So I'm constantly coming back in, reshaping. Nothing goes down perfectly first time. I'm constantly reworking. And just along underneath the top lid adding a little more shadow to the whites of the eyes. So if you come in with too bright a white in this area on the whole eyeball, well one, these smaller highlights won't really jump out and your whole eye will look pretty flat. So really try and save pure white for those brightest highlights, little areas of moisture and that main reflection on the eyeball. So for the next couple of minutes, you will see me just continue to tweak the outline of the eye I'm constantly looking at the photo reference during this process, making very minor adjustments and not leaning too heavily so things can still move around a little.
So now I pick up a nice blue grey and even with the bigger piece I'm able to just find a little corner of it and make some little marks around the iris. And it goes on top of the darker blue really nicely. When I blend it in a little bit you'll still be able to see some of the blue shining through. So I'm not too neat with it at this stage. I know that I can shape this all into place afterwards. And I often use uh, one of these tortelons. It's just made from paper and has a point at each end. You can get them in different sizes. And it's great when your fingertip is just a bit too big for blending. I can use the fine point of this just to create some texture through it and blend it into the blue underneath. And now with my black pastel pencil, I can reshape all of that. There's often a darker outline around the edge of the iris. So that it allows me to make a nice definite edge to it. And also the darkest shadow under the eyelid is in the middle there, just where the iris is underneath. So I'm not going as dark as I want it to be right away. I'm using each opportunity to come back and neaten what I've done as another opportunity to add a little layer of depth. And now just marking in the darkness of the pupil. And you also want your brightest reflection in the eye to have good dark contrast behind it. So where I see really jet black, I really go for jet black and try and create that depth. So that when I bring in a little shard of white pastel. And again, I could do this with the pastel pencil, but I would get nowhere near as bright a mark as when I do it with the soft pastel. And I just try and find a little shard. Quite often I drop a few pastels by accident and that soon creates some sharp edges, but those pieces of pastel are always my most useful. And then, of course, I can come in with the pastel pencil and shape it a bit more. And I'll also use the dark pastel pencil to shape it from the other side. So I really don't worry if things don't go on in quite the, the neat fashion that I want them to end up in. I just try and get it on in roughly the right place and then I know that there's a lot I can still do to work it and shape it. So it's quite the opposite to another medium, maybe like watercolours, where I feel you've got to be quite precise to begin with. But with pastels, and similar with oil painting, uh, you can be quite flexible as you go, uh, things will move you can uh, really adjust and tweak things as you go. The only thing that might happen you with pastel is that you will eventually fill the tooth of the paper and then you'll find it really difficult to be able to apply more pastel, especially when trying to apply light colours on top of dark. So that's why it's good to use a proper pastel paper, especially if you're just learning 
as it makes it a lot easier. Uh, it can accept a lot more layers and you won't end up with a, a lot of messy pastel spread all over your paper. And so still just tweaking the area around the eye. It's really all connected and when I'm trying to get the shape of the eye right, uh, I see other little things in the surrounding areas that need correction. So here I'm just using some of my pan pastel blenders. I tended to keep this one for darker colors so you can see I'm just enhancing the darkness in that corner. And they were really great as I could make very soft marks blend very subtly on this paper. And much better than using my fingertip or even the paper tortillon that I talked about earlier. Uh, really good on pastel mat for creating nice soft blends. And I tended to keep one tool for working with light colours and another tool for working with dark colours. And I did make use of some new pan pastels in this portrait. But I also found that I made use of the pan pastel applicators, even uh, using them to rub pigment off my unison sticks. So a really uh, good set of tools to use alongside your soft sticks. And so I'm coming back in, um, I think I looked at the initial colour that I used here and I really didn't feel that I had gone dark enough. So you can see how easy it is just to bring a little layer of colour in and correct that. And sometimes just getting the bright white highlight on uh, makes it clear where you need to go darker in another area. So I'm constantly measuring colours off one another. And I'm not always using uh, very sharp pastel pencils. You'll notice some of them are sharpened quite a lot. Some of them I uh, use when they're quite blunt. And you just get a variety of marks. I find the, sharp of, the sharper the pencil, um, the less variety I can really get with it. And in case you're wondering, I don't use a pencil sharpener. I just use a craft knife or a scalpel. But I think I think if I used more pencils in my work, I would possibly look into one of the good sharpeners on the market. But it's really only a few colors that I make use of mostly. Um, black, brown, a uh, few lighter colors, uh, white, uh, yellowy cream, a light gray, and then maybe a few mid-tones like a blue, and some of the warmer oranges that you've seen me use. So it's really quite a minimal uh, of pastel pencil use in my work. But when it comes to eyes, they really do make the best tools with those points. And especially for uh, the outline of the eye, you can see how often I've come back to this. Just making tiny adjustments each little curve of the eye uh, creates so much expression on the face. And for the next few moments, you'll see me just continue to make minor adjustments to this eye and final tweaks at the highlight. And then I'll move on to the second eye but I will come back at the very end for eyelashes and the final tweaks.
So this eye is not far off done. I've still got a bit of work to do on the eyelid area, but the eyeball itself is pretty much done and I'm going to jump over to the other eye now and then once both eyes are in I always find I can make final adjustments when both of them are looking back. But at this stage I can see that the eyelid needs darkened more. I still need more contrast in there in the shadows. So I'm never done with one area while I'm working on the painting. Although I work uh, for long periods of time on one spot, I may well come back to that area and rework later on if once I get other colours in around it, I see that I need to make adjustments. So that's the wonderful thing about pastel. You can constantly come back and rework different areas. And now on to the second eye. And it's in a lot more shadow over on this side of the face. There's less of the whites of the eye showing. And it's also quite an unusual shape as it bends off around the side of the face. He's also got quite a quirky little expression on his face. So I'm really trying to capture that. And like with the other eye, paying a lot of attention to the overall shape or outline of the eye. So again, using the black pastel pencil for the outline of the iris. And I can afford to go a good bit darker over on this eye as it's much more in shadow than the eye on the left. And then, of course, I can come in with my lighter pastel pencil and neaten that up from the other side. And now, using some grey 8, which is a colour I've used quite a lot in the background of this piece as well. But you can see just how dark I'm going with that white part of the eye. And really when you compare that area to something white, it does need to be quite dark in there. 
So it's always a bit of a trick getting your head to agree with you that something needs to be much darker. It's usually much darker that we need to go than we think. So when I'm looking at something, I'm really trying to look at the colour it actually is. And a useful tip for uh, practicing that, if you've got a Photoshop or a similar photo editing software, there's usually a tool on there called Eyedropper. And you can pick colors out of a photograph or a painting and it will show you the actual hue. And it can be so surprising, get yourself a photograph of something with uh, a white dog or Something white is usually a good one to mess about with and do some colour picking on it in areas. Try and choose what you think the colour is and then use the eyedropper tool to see what colour it actually is. And I bet you'll be surprised at how dark it tends to be. And that's a really good thing to do to start to train your eye to see colours as they actually are and find a whole extra range of tonal value within your colour work. So the same as with the eye on the other side, blocking in the iris first with my blue and then using the black pastel pencil to start to find where the black pupil is. And again I've left a little space roughly where the reflection on the eye will go. It wouldn't really matter if I coloured it in really dark and then applied the reflection on top of that. With a good pastel paper and using nice pigmented, strong, uh, soft pastels, you'll be able to put a really light colour on top of dark. But it helps me just to leave the little gap, uh, the shape of the reflection roughly. And I think it does shine out a little brighter, so rather than it having to cover jet black first, it uh, seems to sparkle a little brighter. And like with the other eye, just using the pastel pencils to shape the outline around the eyelids. And you can possibly hear Harry McClary in the background. He erupts the odd time into barking. I uh, don't know if my microphone's picking him up. <laughs> but just continuing to tweak at the shape of the outside of the eye, around the edges. And I'm not leaning very heavily. Just lightly rubbing the pencil onto the paper. And you can see that it softens into the layers below quite nicely. So just continuing to make minor adjustments with the pastel pencils. I've got the shape of it pretty well. I just want to tweak at certain areas, soften any hard lines and find any little bits of extra light that might be hitting in there. So like here for example, just lightening the bottom of the eyeball a little bit where the light is hitting it and it's not quite so under the shadow from the eyelid.
So on this side, I decided to use a bit of grey pastel pencil just because the area is so tiny. And also I didn't need it to shine out quite as brightly over here where there's so much shadow over the eye. So just some small flicks from the pupil out towards the edge of the eye. But again, this will get blended in a little as it's a bit too bright at the moment. But I'm just trying to create some texture on the iris. And again, the nice deep blue underneath will hopefully shine through. Finding my pupil shape again. And still trying to strengthen that top line of the eye. This eye in particular is at a bit of a tricky angle, so I'm just constantly looking at the shape of things, trying to make small adjustments that capture the angle of it slightly better. And please do bear in mind that my painting does look a bit skewed. Uh, just because of the angle of where I've set my camera. I like to work on an easel that's upright uh, so that I can see my proportions nicely. So I'm not able to fix a camera right above where I work and film from above. Um, I'm constantly trying to set the camera somewhere that I'm not nudging into it or that it's not in my way. So please bear that in mind and I am hoping to get some new tripods and mounts for my new camcorder and try and be able to fix the camera in a place that won't get in my way and that I'll get a clearer shot of my work. So yeah, my video making is for me still a work in progress. This past year I've been adding to my equipment um, with the help of the support of my patrons over on Patreon. I've been able to upgrade uh, studio lighting a better laptop for editing the videos, a new camera which uh, gives me much better footage. This is actually still filmed on my old camera. I'm just now starting to work on the footage that I've made from my new camera in the past couple of months. So I've been able to make a lot of improvements to my uh, the quality of my videos in the past year alone uh, thanks to the support on Patreon. And I hope if support like that continues that I'll be able to keep making lots of video tutorials and over time really improve the quality of them and release a much bigger range of subjects and different paper types. Hopefully it will free me up in time to experiment a lot more with different materials and different papers. So on this eye, I've used a lot more pastel pencil as you've seen. It's just been a trickier little shape of an eye to work on, a bit less space. And also because it's not in the sunlight so much, I haven't needed my colours to be quite as bright. So I even made use of the pastel pencil for the reflection in the eye. And I don't mind that it's a little duller than the other side as that makes sense in this lighting. And now it's time for uh, final touches and of course eyelashes. So I still felt I had a bit of tweaking to this side to do. And I start to plot in some eyelashes And I'm using the brown pastel pencil, so not going as dark as black. Brown's a little more natural looking. 
You certainly don't want your baby to look like it's wearing mascara. But certainly with someone who is fair haired, it's much more likely that uh, brown will be better for eyelashes. But I'm just noticing minor things that I can do to adjust that eyelid. I'm picking out a little bit of highlight in there just so that my eyelashes have something to show up against. But even at this late stage, I can make serious adjustments to the overall shape of things. Here I'm really just having another go at the eyelid, as I'm not quite happy with the shape that I have it. And you can see that I can just lighten up to a certain point at the crease, and then come back in with my darker pencil and try and get the shape of it a little more accurately. And it's often the next day when I come back to work at something that I'll notice a hundred things that I missed the day before. So fresh eyes are always good if you're struggling to capture a likeness. Several things you can do. Number one, take a break, walk away from it. When you come back, hopefully the problem will hit you in the face. If it doesn't, uh, another thing you can try is holding your portrait up to a mirror. Uh, if there's anything strange going on with your proportions, you'll spot it right away in its reflection. Another thing you can do, which uh, I like to do often as I share my progress pictures, on Facebook and Instagram. But if you take a picture of your work in progress and you look at it on a small screen like your phone or tablet, if you have it next to your photo reference, it's much easier to notice what the problem is from the flattened uh, small picture of it. But again, it's a bit like uh, getting some distance from your piece, walking away, looking at it from across the room, all those sorts of things, uh, looking at it upside down. So there's lots of tips to help you spot uh, where you're having problems. As often as it can be really tricky to find that one little area that's messing up your lovely likeness. But I hope you found this helpful. I'll hopefully be doing some more people portraits this year and try out some different papers too. But uh, for people portraits, definitely recommend the pastel mat. It accepts lots of layers, lets you blend really subtly and slowly. And yep, I'll definitely use it again for another people portrait soon. But I'm hoping this year to create a wide variety of tutorials, um, everything from wildlife. I have a horse tutorial coming soon. Lots of dogs as always. Some people portraits, landscapes, as many different things as I can fit in. And the more variety, the better when you're learning. Um, I find it really broadens your skills as an artist to challenge yourself with lots of different subject matters and hopefully I can help you out with some of those through my tutorials. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this, found it helpful. If you haven't already, please do hit the subscribe button to me here on YouTube and if you'd like to see more, check me out over on my Patreon channel. Until next time, happy pastling.